So, this completely slipped under my radar, but we actually do have ourselves some news as to whom it is the Edmonton Oilers and Vancouver Canucks could both be targeting. Now, this is going to be some sort of a bidding war conversation. We've got two teams, one player, and one article to go out there and talk about in this video. So, without further ado, let's go over and read this piece from Luke Fox from two days ago, August 23rd, 2024, as he goes out there and writes about the top 10 UFAs that are still available. This is the latest buzz. Now, the article is self-explanatory, there are 10 names, there are 10 ideas, and there's a bunch of interesting guys that are popping up here and there, Tyler Johnson, Philip Zadina, Kalen Addison, but if you scroll down into the, what is it, the 10th overall spot here, you'll find an interesting conversation going over 34-year-old right-handed defenseman Justin Schultz. Now, his cap hit for 2023-2024 was three million bucks. And uh, I'm thinking about it like that. What the hell? That guy was making three million dollars? Either way, let's go out there and read the piece here. The veteran right shot defenseman comes with two Stanley Cup rings and 745 games of NHL experience. He and the Kraken are coming off a down year in Seattle. Schultz went minus 23, a career worst, but he can still move a puck, contribute offense from the back end, and eat minutes. The Kelowna BC native has become a speculative PTO target in Vancouver and Edmonton, with both Western Canadian clubs losing some blue line depth over the summer. So with this in mind, let's talk about the idea of Justin Schultz being a Vancouver and Edmonton target. Now, I wanted to say this when it comes to the Oilers, it's always going to be interesting because Justin Schultz was a former Oiler. And I feel like it was a really big deal when he left Edmonton in the first place. He had decided to sign with the Oilers straight out of the NCAA. He was really good in Edmonton, getting back to back 30 point seasons. He got traded to Pittsburgh and then he won two cups. He also had a 50-point year tossed in there as well, so many Oilers fans feel like there was a big one-that-got-away situation with Justin Schultz and his entire profile. But as the years went on, Schultz kind of rounded himself out in Pittsburgh. He went over to Washington, went over to Seattle, had a 34-point season in 2023, and then this previous season he had 26 points in 70 games played. A far cry from the 50-point caliber defenseman that he once was. Now, of course, you can understand why he got 50 points. He was pretty much one of the main power play guys, and that team boasted the likes of Crosby, Malkin, and Latang. So, they were good. Justin Schultz, though, was in a pretty tough spot as his Pittsburgh career went on. A lot of people started criticizing his game, questioning whether or not he really was all too good, and that's why he didn't get re-signed by Pittsburgh. But now, I feel like most people just kind of accept Justin Schultz more or less for what he is. He's a puck-moving guy who isn't really the best defensively, but if you give him that role, you give him that opportunity, he can probably get some points for you here and there, especially if he is on your power play. This is definitely a player who is worth thinking about in the context of building a second unit or something along those lines. So for Edmonton and Vancouver to both be involved here, it does make sense. Now, of course, he is from the Western Canadian area, so these two teams being linked to him, I think there's more logic in these two teams than any others. And furthermore, there's the idea that, hey, he already chose to sign in Edmonton once before. And him being from Kelowna also adds that Vancouver link. Yeah, it's easy to fill in the blanks there. I wanted to actually talk about the Oilers first and foremost, because when it comes to them and their desperation for defense on the right side, I think it's a lot more dire than Vancouver's at this point. Everybody's talking about how they could get a Tyson Berry, they could get this guy, they could get that guy, because they lost out on Philip Broberg and Cody Cece, and Ty Emerson is going to come in here and be a guy to replace those minutes, but is he good enough to do that full-time? There's a necessity here, and I think it's easy to understand where everybody's coming from when they say that the Oilers could get another right-handed defenseman, especially one of a pretty high offensive magnitude. If Justin Schultz is able to exercise some of those demons that he had brought up after he left Edmonton and became a Stanley Cup champion 50-point defenseman with Pittsburgh, this could be his opportunity to do that. And if he plays on a team like Edmonton, where it's like, yeah, they are a Stanley Cup championship caliber team, maybe he could go cup chasing for the third time in his career. Who really knows? 
PTO or not, I think Justin Schultz and his entire lore attached to the Edmonton Oilers would provide for a very entertaining signing experience, even if he's not good enough to make the team. And honestly, I feel like he is an NHL caliber defenseman. I mean, he was a Seattle crack in the past two years, and he was all right point production wise. Sure, the plus minus wasn't there this previous season, but come on, it's a plus minus stat. Plus, it's like you know, Seattle. They decline pretty heavily. Everybody in Seattle had a bad year compared to the year beforehand, so I don't want to give him too much of a hard time by just talking about his plus minus being a negative rating. Then you go over to the Vancouver Canucks, and you talk about some of the same conversations we had had a few videos ago. Remember that video we talked about? John Klingberg, Mark Giordano, we had gone over the entire defense situation in Vancouver. How there are enough guys to fill in the spots. Hughes, Hronick, Susie Myers, DeHarnay, Forbord, and then you have Friedman and Juleson. But if you wanted to get another guy to maybe push some of these extra guys to their limits, if you wanted to make the competition for the fifth, sixth spots a little bit more drastic, you could grab yourself a PTO and bring on a guy who is as offensively capable as a Justin Schultz is. Like, I get it. There's a very specific identity that... Patrick Alvin and Jim Rutherford are building with this decor. We had seen it last season. Zadorov, Cole, these guys coming in here, and then this offseason, Forbort and DeHarnay, they like big dudes. They like physical dudes. They like big, heavy, physical D. But Justin Schultz isn't really that. He's more of just a puck-moving, offensive-first kind of mind. And while that's still fine... You know, the Canucks have two guys that are already good at that in Hughes and Hronick. And with the talks of them potentially splitting these two up and giving somebody like Vinny Deharnay, for example, a chance at the top spot, it does become interesting when you consider how the Canucks might be interested in building three D pairings that have offensive potential. If you have Hughes, Hronick, and then a guy like Justin Schultz in the first, second, and third pairings, that's a lot of offense to go around the entire lineup. Now, it would up the responsibility defensively of some of the guys that are attached to those lines, so a Susie or a Myers or somebody else, but it is an option, and I do think there's a philosophy there that does make sense if you wanted to stretch it and bring that idea to the forefront. Do you want to put all your offensive chips into the top pairing of Hughes and Hronick and just have a bunch of brutes, twin, triplet, quartet towers on the second and third pairings? Or would you rather distribute the wealth a little bit, distribute the offensive talent? That's a super interesting idea that you could also honestly apply to the Tyson Berry conversation. I mean, a lot of people have been talking about whether or not Berry could be a Canucks target as well, but that's mostly because I feel the guy's from Victoria, so there's always going to be a link there. I mean, look, we've been making Barry to Vancouver videos for years, literally since I was in high school. We were talking about this guy potentially being a Canucks target, and now for Edmonton, I mean, he makes sense as well, but either way, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below about Luke Fox's little scoop here about how the Oilers and the Canucks are both potentially going to be targeting Justin Schultz as a PTO option. Is there a bidding war going on for a tryout? Is that really something you think is applicable here? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below if you're an Oilers or a Vancouver Canucks fan. How do you feel about Justin Schultz? And if you're the odd Seattle Kraken fan tuning into this video wanting to see what the update is about your guy, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below as to how Justin Schultz had performed in 2024. Is he a player worth thinking about? Is he somebody who outshines the minus rating that he had? And does he have more to show for like he had last season where he had 30-something points in 22-23? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. I hope you enjoyed this video. And bye.